I use Arch, by the way. And in this video today, I want to yap a little bit about this. I want to talk about my experience, my first impression of using Arch, whether I want to continue using it or not, and what the pros and cons are of using Arch as your main distribution. So let us get right into it. All right, so this is going to be a yapping video today. I'm just going to be talking about my experience with Arch. So this is mainly targeted towards Linux users, people that are interested in Linux, people that are interested in Arch. Maybe you are already using it. Maybe you want to uh, consider using it. And I just want to share my experiences with Arch, whether I want to keep using it or not, why I switched in the first place, uh, what the pros and cons are. I just want to yap a little bit about this. So there's not going to be much educational value here, uh, unless, of course, you're interested in choosing an operating system and you don't know which one uh, you want to go with. So it's not going to be very structured. I do have a couple of points that I want to talk about. And I want to get started with uh, the context first. So first of all, my whole life, I've been using Windows, then two or three years ago, I started using Pop! OS as my main operating system, uh, meaning that I basically use Pop! OS all the time. The only reason why I switched to Windows at all, or why I booted into Windows at all, uh, where for very, very rare occasions of compatibility, because I didn't know how to deal with certain file types uh, on Linux and for gaming. So certain games don't run on Linux at all, no matter what you do, mostly because of kernel level anti cheat. Uh, and that was basically the only reason why I ever booted into Windows. So I was basically using Linux already full time for two to three years. Now I switched to Arch Linux uh, for multiple reasons. And I want to talk about this in this video today. But the main reason why I switched to Arch is because I wanted to have more up to date packages. Now, of course, you can always find ways to do that on Ubuntu on Debian, you can just use different repositories, you can just download software manually. But I like to have the Pacman package manager, the Arch repositories. And also one thing that I'm going to talk about later on the AUR, the Arch user repository, which is like the main selling point of the operating system. Uh, but in general, I was interested in having more cutting edge software. So I was not that much interested in stability. I'm not running a server here. Uh, that is critical for some application, I'm running my own operating system. And I would like to have packages that are up to date that have the newest versions, because uh, with open source software, you know, bugs are being reported, uh, features are being requested, and the newest version has most of these things installed. So that was my number one reasoning. Uh, another reasoning was even though gaming is not what I do on my system, for the most part, I don't game a lot. I kind of thought that maybe Arch is going to be a better distribution for compatibility reasons, maybe because of the newer drivers, maybe because of uh, other reasons. But I saw that SteamOS, which is like the I would say the main driver of Linux gaming is Valve with SteamOS and with the whole Linux compatibility movement. Uh, from Valve. And I thought if they based their system on Arch Linux, there's probably a reasoning behind it. And there's probably going to be uh, compatibility stuff, if you want to call it that available for Linux. So that was like one reason. But in general, I just wanted to have stuff that's more up to date. That was my number one reason for switching. And uh, of course, I just wanted to try it because you know, using Arch is kind of this status symbol. If you're a Linux user, of course, that was not the main reason, but I wanted to just have the experience. I wanted to see what Arch feels like. And in this video, I want to compare pros and cons. So one thing I want to highlight in the very beginning, I think this is the most important thing uh, is when you use Arch, at least if you use like the basic Arch, you will have to do everything from scratch. Now, nowadays with Arch install, you do have a very convenient setup. So installing Arch Linux is not as difficult as it was in the past. I have installed at Arch in the past. And it was a very tedious process where you had to go to the wiki, you had to look at the documentation and everything. Uh, nowadays, it's just arch install, you choose your setup, you choose your desktop environment and whatnot, you choose uh, the suites that you want to use for sound and so on. And then you have your system, at least a basic version of your system ready, uh, which of course is a pro and a con. If you look at my fast fetch, you can see I don't have a lot of packages installed here. So I have only 1063 packages. And this is at the same time a pro and a con for me, it's a massive pro because I was already using pop OS for, I don't know, half a year or something uh, like a lot of people use arch. So I was using the i3 window manager, I was using polybar, I was using uh, PCOM if it's pronounced like that. So I was basically setting up my own environment and customizing it. So I was not using gnome or KDE plasma or anything like that. I was using very customized minimal minimal setups. 
And because of that, that's like how you do it on Arch. And for me, that is what I wanted to do as well. So this is besides the drivers, maybe the second most important reason for switching to Arch. I didn't want to have anything on my system that I didn't need. So I don't need all the UI stuff, all the background stuff that is being pre-installed with a lot of operating systems. I want to do everything myself. I want to know every piece of software that I install on my system. And this is what you get with Arch. You basically just get your i3 window manager if you choose that option. And the rest is up to you. You have to install the compositor. You have to install the Bluetooth functionality. Uh, you have to install uh, even basic stuff like viewing thumbnails. You know, you open up your you open up your uh, file manager of choice, file explorer. And for certain file types like images and videos, you want to have previews. You want to see, okay, what is the content of the image without even getting into uh, the image before, before you like open it, you want to see what the content is. And if you want to do that, you have to install packages, specific packages for that. Uh, same with GNOME keyrings, for example, something you need to install to manage credentials, or uh, in my case, X archiver, if you don't have an archiver, you cannot open zip files in a graphical user interface, you can do, of course, stuff in the command line, but every small component of your operating system uh, needs to be installed by you. So you need to take care of basically everything yourself which on the one hand means that you don't have the seamless setup where you just plug and play. But also it means that you know every single piece of software running on your system and you know why it's running on your system. So that basically means by using Arch, you're forced to learn a lot about Linux. So by knowing that something doesn't work, trying to figure out why it doesn't work, for example, Bluetooth or seeing thumbnails, uh, and then having to install a package to make it work makes you or forces you to learn what exactly is happening in the operating system and you'll learn okay credentials are not managed automatically just by the kernel but you have to install something like gnome keyrings for example and you then look into the software you understand okay what part of the system is doing what and you only have software on your system that you deliberately install which is in my opinion a pro you learn a lot uh, and it's a very lightweight setup what you end up with is a configuration that's very customized and you only have the stuff that you need which also means it's faster, it's more efficient. But it also means that you cannot just use your system right away. And this is like the biggest downside. And I would definitely sell uh, say that Arch is first of all, not for beginners, and second of all, not for everyone. And I'm not saying this from an elitist perspective of like, oh, you need to be intelligent enough to use Arch. It's more about preference, you know, if you don't like having to configure a lot of stuff, you should probably go with an operating system that works out of the box. There's many Linux distributions that you just install and they work for the most part and you don't really need to do anything. If there's some problem, you can do it with a basic terminal command or with a basic GUI option. When Arch, uh, in Arch, you basically have to do everything uh, in a very manual way in a very informed way, you could say so you really need to understand what is happening, you need to read the error messages. And oftentimes your system might also break and require manual intervention. For example, one thing that happened to me, I think one or two days ago, is this thing here. So the Linux firmware upgrade requires manual intervention. What does this mean? I open up my terminal, I did my basic pseudo pacman uh, dash SYU, which is updating all the packages. And it basically told me you can't do that. There's some problem because some path is already uh, already exists in the firmware package. Uh, there, there's some problem basically. And uh, what I had to do, this is a very simple fix, but you have to go to the Arch Linux page, you have to see, okay, there's some news article uh, that says that this upgrade requires manual intervention. And then they tell you you need to run these commands, or you need to run this command before running this command. And then it's solved. Uh, or resolved. So that is fine. Of course, it's a simple fix. But stuff like this happens when you use arch and arch is rolling release, which means you don't have real system upgrades, you don't have a new version of arch, what happens is you just continuously update important packages, update the kernel, update everything. So you're keeping your system up to date on a daily basis, you're not upgrading major versions. And because of that, oftentimes, also the system can break. And you will have to here and there fix some issues. Although in my time that I'm using Arch, which is like three, three weeks, I think uh, I didn't encounter any major problems yet. This was like the, the only one that really uh, didn't allow me to uh, update my packages. But besides that, I didn't really experience a lot of problems. Uh, I think the, the largest issue that I had besides that was I tried to remove the disk encryption. So I installed Arch with this disk encryption, then I wanted to uninstall or to remove the disk encryption. And I did it in place. And then 
it somehow broke my booting setup because I had some uh, some, something mounted or I don't know what the what the issue was exactly, but I had to then go into this emergency terminal and configure stuff. However, I need to say that Arch Linux has a very, very good wiki. So if you go and say Arch Linux, um, remove LUKS, remove system encryption, here you have a very good guide that tells you how to do everything. So the Arch wiki is a very, very uh, powerful resource all the stuff here is documented. Of course, you do need to have some level of technical expertise. You cannot just copy paste commands without thinking about them. Uh, you need to understand what you're doing. But the Arch Wiki has documented almost everything that's somehow important to you. But again, to summarize, I would not recommend anyone to use Arch if you're not interested in that customization and tinkering, because it's not the kind of system you just install and it runs and it's done. Uh, I would describe Arch to be more like a project where the first couple of weeks and months, you don't really use the system without flaws, but you like keep track of all the flaws, keep track of all the problems that occur, you note them down and then over time you fix them. So I have a document um, on my system here where I note all the problems that exist on my system. So for example, I have to log into the same service every time I boot the application. Okay, what was the problem? I didn't have GNOME key rings installed, which the application relied on behind the scenes. So every time I started the application, I had to re re log in uh, to the service. Okay, solved. Then there was a problem with my Bluetooth headset, uh, switching to a certain mode, I had to create a config file to turn off this option in wire plumber, I think uh, was the application or the package, I had to uh, set up a or set an option that says, okay, don't do this automatically do this only if I do it manually, stuff like that. So I basically keep track of everything that annoys me, everything that's buggy, everything that doesn't work. And I basically find a solution over time, which means that for the first couple of weeks and months of using arch, it's going to be very difficult, it's going to be buggy, it's not going to work, stuff is going to break. And over time, you're going to have the perfect system. So it means that after months of using it, I have the perfect system for myself, everything works, everything's customized for me. And it's lightweight, which you need to like, right? Now, in terms of transitioning, how difficult is it? Or was it for me to transition from something like pop OS to arch, it was actually quite simple for me. Because what I did was I basically already used polybar, which you see down here with i3 window manager, which is this thing here. Uh, and with PCOM, which is the compositor and with all the stuff like uh, better lock screen and all the tooling around it. Um, basically, I was using pop OS like this. So what I did is I installed arch, I copied my config files, I slightly edited them. And basically, I had the same setup. So right now I have the same setup that I have on my pop OS hard drive. Uh, and that's it. So it wasn't really a big shift. The only difference is that I had to do a lot of um, stuff manually that was already installed on pop OS because it had gnome by default, uh, and a, a lot of packages by default, but it wasn't a lot of work, it didn't require a lot of effort to do that. I also don't think that it requires a huge amount of effort if you install arch with something like KDE plasma or gnome. I think that arch nowadays is very easy to install. I think it took me probably 2030 minutes to install and set up everything, uh, copying the config files, installing all the software. Uh, so I'm yeah, actually very happy with the process. Now, probably the biggest selling point of Arch Linux is the AUR, the Arch user repository, which is basically packages being maintained by users. So examples here would be cursor, would be Minecraft launcher, would be discord. So you have certain pieces of software that I think don't really have a an official version. I'm not sure if discord is available. I mean, oftentimes you have stuff like a flat pack or an app image, which is like platform independent in the Linux world. But you don't have like a dedicated arch package for discord, I think I don't know if you have one for cursor for Minecraft. Actually, if you go to the website, and you click on arch Linux, you're redirected to this package here. Uh, from the from the AUR. So the AUR is basically you build your packages yourself. So you have this uh, package build file, and you have the source code being maintained by maintainers. Um, which are ordinary people. So right, these are not some Arch Linux chosen people. These are like ordinary community people that develop and maintain these packages, which also, of course, is a little bit of a security issue. So when you download a package that is maintained by somebody that you don't know, that's not like part of the Arch Linux uh, team or moderator or whatever maintainer team, 
Uh, this, of course, is a security risk because you're just relying on the packages from this AUR. But I need to say that I'm really happy with a couple of these packages like Cursor, Discord, Minecraft Launcher, because you don't have to update manually. You don't have to go to the website. You don't have to use browsers at all. You can just use a package manager like uh, Yay, or actually it's called, I think, an AUR wrapper, or I'm not sure what the proper term is. But basically, you can use yay like Pacman. You just say yay dash s and then, for example, cursor bin, and you install this from the AUR. And then, of course, you can also update all the packages with yay. And the cool thing is you don't have to leave the terminal anymore. And these packages are usually updated very, very quickly. So, for example, Discord, I think, had an update to a newer version, actually to this one. And when I ran it, I wasn't able to use Discord because it said, okay, there's an update, so you have to... Uh, update to the latest version and I wasn't able to do that because this version was not yet updated but 20 minutes later it was updated so it's actually quite uh, quick or this actually adjusts quite quickly. So I'm very happy with the AUR. I don't rely on it for everything because again I'm a little bit cautious with packages that are not mainstream. If a package is mainstream, if it has a lot of comments uh, and a lot of votes and everything then I consider it to be uh, okay, or then I consider it to be trustworthy. But in general, I try to be actually this one is this one is Arch Linux package. This is not an AUR package. Sorry about that. Uh, but these two here are AUR packages. So the idea is if there's something that's not available by the classic uh, packages that you that you can use with Pacman, if it's not uh, available in some other easy way, you will most likely find it in the AUR. Everything is in the AUR. And if it isn't, some guy's going to be introducing it, maybe you. Uh, so this is a community driven repository. And it's very, very powerful to get all sorts of software from here. But of course, Take it with a grain of salt if the package is kind of new and maybe doesn't have a lot of votes. So yeah, uh, let's talk about the conclusion here. Am I going to keep using Arch Linux or not? Am I happy with the experience? My answer is a clear yes. Up until this point, the system did not break. I don't have any reason not to use Arch. What I'm currently doing is I have two hard drives. Before I had Pop! OS and Windows. Now I have Arch and Pop! OS. So Pop! OS is like my trusted system where I know stuff works. So if I have to do something critical or if my Arch fails, I have to uh, or I, I can always switch to Pop! just to, to you know, do stuff uh, in the case of an emergency or in the case of something having to be done quickly. For example, recently I had a Teams call and uh, the audio didn't work on Arch and I wasn't able to fix it uh, quickly. So I just rebooted my system, booted into Pop! OS and uh, used that and then I went back to Arch, fixed the problem. Uh, but that's the kind of setup that I have right now. I'm probably going to get a third hard drive for Windows uh, later because... I think about having Windows really just for gaming. I don't game a lot, but I don't want to completely make it impossible to use certain uh, certain games, which even if I just play them once in two months, I just want to have the option to do so. Uh, but let's see. Maybe I'm not going to do that. Maybe I am. That's the, the, the idea for now. And I think I'm going to keep using Arch until it breaks, until it's unusable for me. I really enjoy having the latest versions of the packages of all kinds of software, uh, recording software, editing software, coding software. I just like being up to date. And I really like having the command line, the AUR, everything being possible from the command line and having to install everything manually because I know nothing on my system is bloated. I have everything that I need and I only have what I need on the system. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting a like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. Also, let me know in the comment section down below if you want to see more Linux content, Arch Linux content, more yapping content or more tutorial content. Let me know in the comment section down below. And besides that, uh, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.